You can bring the water out there with you, sir. Correct. Tell me about his demeanor after he saw that video. Uh, scared. Did you or the homicide unit? Did you all ever release to the media that Mr. Wilson was alive, or that Mr. Wilson was alive? No. Okay. Why not? Uh, it honestly was not on purpose in any way, shape, or form. Okay. But that detail was not known. No, it correct? wasn't. Page nine. After Brian Greenwell is confronted with the video, Daryl Wilson, does he change his story? He does. Okay. And what is his new story? Does he admit to going into apartment number one? He does. Does he say that he does this every time? Yeah, he starts off with, I do this every time, and I inquire about what he means by that. And what does he mean by that? He always tries to protect, protect everybody. Okay. So I'm going to skip to page 13. Does Brian Greenwell actually tell you about what happened inside of that bedroom? Big paragraph in the middle. Yes. Okay. Tell me what he told you. Um, he says he went over there, um, that the victims were arguing, arguing. <clears throat> um, he was standing outside to begin with. The victims began fighting and it carried back into the bedroom. And then he went into the bedroom, or he went back there. I'm sorry, it does not say bedroom, it says back there. Does he tell you that Daryl was breaking stuff, throwing stuff, and cussing at Jennifer? Yes, it does. Okay. Does he also tell you that he walked in there and he separated them? Yes. And does he also say, and that's when, to be honest with you, I don't even, I can't remember if, how the gun came into play, for real. Well, we started uh, kind of wrestling around and the gun went off, and then went off again. Does he say that to you? Yes, he does. You ask him how many times he thinks it went off. Yes. What does he tell you? Says honestly, man, I don't even know. I was, I mean, I, I was blacked out or something like that. I don't know, man. It's like, I'm guessing two or three times, three something like that. I remember hearing three gunshots. Do you ask him if he remembers which one he shot first? I did. What was his answer? He said no. Honestly, I don't. I mean, because I was freaked out. I was like, man. What the fuck? I came over to help somebody, and this shit happens. I think, um, I know it went off once. I'm thinking she got hit first. I'm not for sure. And then me and him was still struggling, and it went off again. I do remember that. And that's when he fell on the bed, and I was, I didn't, I mean, I didn't know what to do. I went over there, like you said, no intentions going over there, no malice intended or nothing like that, you know. Um, did Brian ever explain to you why allegedly he and Daryl were, were struggling over the gun? I don't, I don't recall that. 
Did he ever tell you that Jennifer attacked him? Uh, no. Um, did he tell you that he felt threatened? No. Did he tell you that his life was in danger? No. But he did tell you that he blacked out. Correct. Do you ask him what happened to the gun? I did ask him what happened to it and uh, what he did with it. What was his answer? He said he destroyed it. He melted it down. Okay. Did he give you details about how he melted it down? Well, I inquired about that. And Why did you inquire about that? Because I know it takes quite a bit of heat to melt down a barrel of a gun. And I explained that to him. And uh, he said, yeah, I know. And well, the, the gun didn't get melted down. It got took apart. And the barrel got melted down. Okay. I was like, you need help. I was like, man, I don't, because I gave the gun back to the person that owned that owned it. You know what I'm saying? Because he was letting borrow it, and I can't tell you his name, man, because I don't want to get him. Okay. So he maintains that he mounted the gun down, correct? Yeah. Yes. Did that turn out to be true? No, it did not. Okay, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um. Do you ask him if he had the gun on him when he first went over there? Uh, yes. And what does he tell you? Well, I specifically asked him, did you have the gun on you when you first went over there, or did you have to go back and get it? Um, and he said yes, he had it on him. Why did he have it on him? Because uh, the situation that everyone was saying it goes back to there, that he was believe that people are looking for him. Okay. Basically, he kept the gun for protection. Correct. Did he ever mention anything about the shell casings? Yes, I asked him if, uh, if he took anything from the scene or left anything or forgot anything or lost anything. Um, he said he honestly didn't know. Um, and he followed that up with, I mean, I didn't even try fucking finding the shells that came out of the gun. I was just, like, dumbfounded, pretty much. He told you he didn't even try finding the shells that came out of the gun? Correct. How many shell casings did you find on scene? Only two. And how many shots in total were fired in that room? Four. Did Brian ever tell you that Jennifer was armed? No. Did he tell you that Daryl was armed? No. Did that conclude your interview with Brian Greenwell? Uh, it did. Okay. And at that point, did you charge Mr. Greenwell and Mrs. Silver? Uh, yes. During the interviews, um, did you also collect buckle swabs from Ms. Greenwell and Mr. Cecil? I did. Okay, and why did you do that? Again, to compare with uh, evidence located at the scene. Okay. And we're going to move forward to August 22nd. Did you receive some new information on this case? I did. What was that information? Uh, uh, I received information on the whereabouts of the murder weapon. Okay. And where was the murder weapon? Uh, it was located by our LMPD dive team in, um, in Tom Wallace Park in Jefferson Memorial Forest in a pond. Where is Tom? You said Jefferson Memorial Forest. Um, what part of town is that in? It's in Faraday. Um, did you actually go out there with the dive team on that day? I did. Okay. And was the gun recovered? It was. Okay. 
What kind of gun was it? It was a 40 caliber Taurus Millennium model PT-140. Was the magazine inside of that gun when it was recovered? No, it was not. Was the magazine recovered? It was. Um, so they were recovered separately? That's correct. Okay. Were they both recovered from the lake? Yes. Okay. And what did you do with that gun after it was recovered? It was transported to the CSU lab. Did you request that that gun be examined um, and compared to the casings and the projectiles that were collected in this case? Yes. Okay. Um, going back a little bit about the buckles, did you collect anybody else's buckles in relation to this case? Um, Robert Hayes, Daryl Wilson, uh, Jennifer Kane, and both defendants, all of them had their DNA collected. Did you collect a buckle swab from an individual by the name of Christopher Gutman? Yes. Okay. Was that um, swab in any way or shape or form related to this investigation? It wasn't. Those are all of the questions that I have for you right now, Detective Royce. Please answer any questions the defense may have. Any questions? Mm -hmm.